Hey, how's it going, everybody? You're watching DualShockers TV on DualShockers.com. We're here, E3 2012, uh, hanging out with Xseed and checking out a title that's uh, critically acclaimed overseas. Uh, the last story with the, none other than Takuya Matsumoto. Takuya, thank you very much. Uh, pleasure. Um, I, there's a lot of fans. This was critically acclaimed in Japan. Um, how excited are you guys to bring it, bring it over? I'm very happy and I was really surprised that XC was able to bring it over. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I, I'm sure there's a lot of fans that are happy as well. Um, it, it, you've worked on other titles. Uh, we were mentioning just, just now Blue Dragon, which wasn't as accepted in uh, in in our our country. Was there any any fear or any thoughts as something you wanted to change with this 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 brand? So Blue Dragon. I don't want to say it was more uh, towards Japanese gamers, but it was, uh, it's uh, the battle system is turn based, it's traditional JRPG type. So it might have not uh, done well with the Western audience in that sense. But uh, it, with that in mind, yeah, the, our biggest challenge, and I'm really looking forward to how the U.S. audience will take the last story because it's more Western style. Um, I would say definitely that the attacks are very fast-paced now I the style of this game it, it has I was joking around has so many things in it um, you have sl hack and slash you have RTS elements you have um, magic you have it, it seems like you have everything was there ever a concern that there's too much so it is set in a fantasy world, which is sort of universal. It's really easy to grasp and understand and build that type of world. But within that game, that world, we wanted to have a gameplay that the player can actually choose how they want to play it. So as you ma mentioned, it could be like a warrior and going to hack and slash. Uh, it could be like a long range uh, attacker using a, his um, crossbows, or it could be like a mage attacker, or it can even be like a step back and like a commander that you actually command your um, allies to do what you know, what the best way to. Um, conquer that situation so you don't really have to be the best or good at every different job class or type of games play but we just wanted the player to find their own way that fits for them for they the main character and it's interesting because I, I could so I saw very quickly there's a lot of customization down to armor looks um, you can actually remove armor there's a lot of customization even in the cutscenes what's happening in the background um, you can put uh, a lot of things in the main city as far as uh, interactions. Was that a, a goal for you guys to have that interaction not only with the players but with non-playable characters as well? well interaction was something that Sakaguchi was uh, mentioning from the get-go of this project. Um, like how the character like uh, like uh, interact with the environment, how it feels, the texture of it. Um, and like you mentioned, like, you know, what happens when they're like interacting with the NPC, when they bump into them. So it has a more like live feel to it and also like what the, each character's like uh, communication was like. So emotional interaction with, between the characters was really important too. So that was one of the challenges was to implement those um, interactions, those feelings towards one another in a real time, um, real time combat system. So. And I, I gotta say, very impressive. Not only is it a solid single player experience, uh, again, very critically acclaimed overseas in, in Asia and Europe, um, but there's also a lot of co-op aspects to it. Was that something that you definitely wanted to, to put in there or, um, from, the, from the beginning as well? So it's not all... So uh, you mentioned custom, uh, custom cost, costume customization early before, but that was part of a part that you know we wanted the player to have like express themselves through the game, so self-expressions and to when you have those type of thing you want to show it off to other players. So with that concept we came up with the co-op and multiplayer aspect that you can actually interact and show what kind of character or what kind of yeah, uh, yeah character that you like. Now, one thing that's also impressive, and it still blows my mind, that this is on a Wii console. Um, you know, this is probably a, a great reason for people to hold on to their Wiis. Um, was there ever any limitations working with that hardware? And is there any thought of you moving to some of the other consoles, or perhaps even the Wii U, which is the, the, the HD successor? So I guess, first of all, um, he worked on uh, three, uh, Xbox 360 titles before. So. 
he was trying to think how to implement all the um, know-hows that he, for, he learned from there as a development developer into this game. And it's not really like what can't be done in the Wii, but it was more like what can we do to make this the best graphical uh, game in, in the Wii console. So they already had the goal that they were going after, so it wasn't that difficult in that sense. Uh, uh, talking like uh, uh, resolution-wise, uh, because this game has a lot of strategical aspects to it, and we explain a lot of like word details on, uh, through the UI, the user interface. Um, so to display that in a different environment, such as like a big, like a big screen TV to a small screen TV, and then to still to show the same amount of information exactly how we want to show it was uh, one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. So, for, so for Wii U, yeah, to have a screen right in your palm of your hand and watching like um, like American football uh, games that you can see like strategically moving your um, uh, member in there, like uh, watching that, it totally brings me ideas of what we can so do for like last story. Um, I, I gotta say, this is again critically acclaimed overseas. I'm, I gotta say thank you for bringing it over here. Um, it's easily one of the most robust, beautiful looking titles I've seen on the Wii, hands down. Um, any other new projects that you might be working on that you could share with, with the fans? I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said this before, but I'm really happy to say that I've already said uh, nothing like a, nothing that sort of like relates to a, like a last story sequel. But, but, uh, but there, there are projects that he's working on. <laughs> there is something that might happen. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> it's already announced in Japan, and uh, Marvelous Akio, the company that he's working in, is involved in it, and he's working on it. But he's working on um, Soul, Soul Sacrifice, uh, done by Inafune san. So that's the project that he's completely, uh, currently working on. Excellent. Matsumoya san, it's a pleasure. I, I, thank you very much. I can't say say enough. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, the last story did great in overseas. It's going to do great here. Great things for if you have a Wii, get it right now as soon as possible. We're out. Thank you.